In today's video, I'm going to talk about the film simulations in the Fujifilm X100V. Welcome to the new studio, folks. I have just moved house. This is going to be the new studio area for the foreseeable future. Things might change quite a bit. Probably some stuff will go on the wall. Hopefully this echo will disappear. I need to deal with this. And I need to put curtains up as well because uh, in a very short amount of time there will be a band of sun on this desk that will be there until the sun goes down. So that needs to be addressed as well. Hopefully this microphone will do for now, but I'm going to have to maybe get like a podcast mic or another lav mic or something. Let's crack on. Film simulations in the Fuji X100V, there's a whole bunch of them, you can customise everything like crazy, but for this video I'm going to put all the settings to like the standard default and only mess around with the simulations themselves. It's also important to note that the film simulations, they, they don't really emulate film. You're not going to get a film look or something that can fool someone into thinking it's film out of your digital camera. I don't claim to be an expert on how this works, but Fuji's film simulations are basically just picture profiles as you would find on any other camera, but Fuji have put some time and energy into making them look something like or emulate some of the characteristics of older film stocks, which I think is pretty cool, but they're also very customizable, so you can make it look completely different from the film stock that it was intended to emulate. and. Sometimes that works better. And I think a lot of the time that actually works better and you can get a nicer look uh, out of these simulations. So anyways, I'll start by just running through the different ones and I'll, sh I'll throw some pictures up on the screen and then afterwards I'll put all those pictures together so that you can sort of cross-reference all of them uh, to see how they look on the same image. I'm gonna process a bunch of raw files that I have to have that same simulation. So they'll be the exact same picture processed with each of the simulations so that you can see how they would look coming out of camera as a JPEG. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's just go through it and you'll you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna start with Velvia, which is not the standard one, but it's I'll just it's got more saturation and then I'll just work my way down a little bit. So Velvia is the strongest, the most saturated film simulation in the camera. It's also very contrasty and the, the film itself was known for being very unforgiving because you could clip the colours or clip your shadows if you weren't careful. So that's what they've tried to design into this simulation and a lot of people find it far too contrasty or far too saturated in most situations. But I think it was intended for a certain type of light and usually I think landscape photographers were using it. So in the right conditions, Velvia can actually look really good. Moving on to Provia, this is Fujifilm's like standard middle of the road simulation. It's the most versatile, they list it as their kind of do it all um, film simulation for many different subjects. And to me, it just it looks exactly like that. It's pretty natural colors, kind of down the middle contrast, down the middle with saturation, nothing really is going too crazy here. So it's a nice like neutral starting point. The next one is Astia, which I didn't, didn't see much difference with for a while, but it does tend to, it does have some color shifts a little bit. I think the blues become a bit brighter or more saturated. The oranges maybe go down a little bit. There's some hues and luminance changes in there. And maybe the contrast seems about the same, maybe slightly more contrasty. But Fuji actually lists this as having softer colour for a more subdued look. And I think there's almost like a, a reduce in, reduction in clarity. And it's very subtle. Fuji seem to have been careful not to do anything too crazy. Not like adding a wild Instagram filter on anything. It just changes things slightly. Moving on to the Pro Neg simulations. There, there's two of these. There's Pro Neg High and Pro Neg Standard. I'll show you the, the standard pictures because this was just taking me too long to make all these pictures. But the, 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 diff, the only difference I can see is that the high has more contrast. So if you, for photography, I think it's a good one to, to use the high. Uh, maybe for portraits, the standard one is good. Even if you want to just adjust anything slightly with JPEGs and for whatever reason you don't want to shoot raw, 
I think the standard is a good place to be because you will get that just almost a little bit more dynamic range from the JPEG itself. And actually Eterna seems to be in the same kind of bracket. Uh, it's I think Eterna is great for movies because you can you can still adjust things without it being that really flat log profile. So Eterna is kind of a nice starting point where you can just edit a little bit for video. I think it's too flat for photography. I've never really used it for pictures, but it's all down to you and you can tweak these things and possibly find something you love from it. Classic Chrome is maybe one of the most stylized picture profiles they had, uh, especially when it was released. People were very excited about it and it was the most popular for a long while and may still be the most popular actually. Now Classic Chrome seems to be much more contrasty. Uh, it, there's a lot of desaturation in the colors, particularly in yellow and orange. I don't see a lot of saturation in those at all. And it has been seen as this kind of like basic Instagram look that you can get. I'm not exactly sure what film simulation it was supposed to be simulating. People said Kodachrome, but looking at it as standard, it's nothing like what I think Kodachrome looks like. I would say Kodachrome is far more saturated than Classic Chrome is, um, although you can get it pretty close with some adjustments in camera. And actually, this is my favorite simulation to use with some contrast added back in. I'll, I'll put a link in, in the description of the place where I got this simulation recipe from. It's Fuji X Weekly. I don't know the person that made this. I send people to their website all the time, uh, but I'm not like, there's no affiliate or any sort of like partnership here at all. I just, I like their film simulation recipes. So links in the description below, check them out. The next one is Classic Neg. And this was introduced, I think, with the X-Pro3 in like 2019, and it's been added to other cameras since. And this one is quite stylized. Fuji seem to have been getting more and more stylized as they've been adding more simulations. And Classic Neg is, again, very desaturated, probably more contrast than Classic Chrome, but it has this sort of green in the shadows, as well as the yellows and oranges being more desaturated. But the, the greens themselves, so if you are taking pictures and there's grass or trees in there, they shift a little bit. It's like they've almost like they've brought the luminance down and shifted the hue over towards aqua. So there's a, it kind of makes them dark green, slightly aqua looking. So it's a it's a quite a stylized look, and if you put it beside photos with other simulations or just photos from your phone or whatever, it tends to have quite a strong look. However, I think if you were to shoot with only that and presented like a series or body of work with only that film simulation, it might look a little less jarring and could actually, and can actually look pretty cool. But it does right off the bat seem to be another one of those sort of like um, canned Instagram style looks. And I don't, again, maybe it's supposed to emulate Superior or something like that, but I'm not exactly sure. All right, let's take a look at these side by side. I'll put them all up on the screen. Okay, so let's start with this photo here. I took this on December 31st of 2020, and it was actually one of my favorite photos of the whole year. I think anyways, maybe I'm just in a honeymoon period about it. But uh, looking at this, I did not use any of these settings. I used classic Chrome, but with the sort of Kodachrome simulation, so it was much brighter and stronger colors there. Actually, Velvia might look the best of these. Provia looks, it's fine, it's right down the middle. Astia is my second favorite, or maybe my actual favorite, just like as a basic film simulation there, because it's, no, I think I'm sticking with Velvia. I like Velvia for this one. The Pro Next standard is just a bit too flat. The reds look a little muted, which is, it's not, it's not a bad color, but just next to the Astia one, I think I like, I like Astia better. Classic Chrome looks okay, a little desaturated again but changes a lot when you when you change some of the settings in there. Classic Neg, you can see how much more orange that looks. Like it really shifts the colors. There's much more of a kind of greenish tone in the shadows there. I think it's, it's pretty subtle, but I'm pretty sure it's there. Like you can see it on the shadow on the door, because of the white door. It's a lot more green than the other pictures. But you know, actually it doesn't look too bad in that. I've seen Classic Neg look really awful with some pictures. 
This was one of the first photos that I shot with the X100V that I actually liked. So this was way back in May when I was walking the dog around our neighbourhood and I'd always seen this car but I'd never really got a good photo of it before. And here I like maybe a classic Neg the most. Kind of brings out the sky, the clouds a little bit there. Velvet looks okay. Looks better than I really expected it to look. I always thought I was going to hate it in every, in every picture. But yeah, I think in this case classic Neg is my favourite. That was a pretty easy choice. Let's go on to the next one. This was a photo from November in 16th Street in Denver. Velvet, you can see the Velvia looks really strong there. It's probably just, it's probably a little bit too saturated. Astia again looks really quite good. And to be honest, I think maybe the blues are a little overpowering for me. I would like to see more orange. I definitely used classic chrome when I shot this, but with the color turned up and with the color chrome effects on, Using that Fuji X Weekly Kodachrome simulation and it was one of my favourites of the year. I just I really liked how this guy's face was kind of just highlighted from all the shadow. But having said that, Classic Neg actually looks pretty good as well. But you can see how the contrast like makes the sky a lot brighter and it's a little less forgiving because your shadows are darker at the same time. Alright, next one. Velvia actually looks okay with this one. It's, this is a little closer to this kind of scene that Velvia I think was made for to really make the colours pop out. It may even just make the greens a little bit too strong though, like it's uh, the yellows, it almost looks like there's yellow in the in the grass and it might be a little bit too much. And sitting next to photos like these, like Provia, that's pretty much how the scene looked, nice sort of standard scene in bright sunlight. Classic Neg is very stylized. Classic Chrome is almost like that dialed back a little bit, which I think is maybe why it was so popular is it kind of has that stylized look, but it's not it's not too far. Classic Neg does look pretty cool though. Starting to rethink my feelings on Classic Neg. <laughs> Alright, the fifth one. This was in Garden of the Gods a few days after we first moved to Colorado. And I think they all actually look pretty good here. It just kind of depends on what you prefer. Astia is always pretty pleasing, kind of middle of the road. Classic Neg is way more contrasty, you can hardly see the ground there at all. But yep, I think I shot, actually this was probably edited from a raw file when I first did it and I probably didn't use any of these as I wasn't quite at the stage where I was only using film simulations yet. But I was likely using Classic Chrome like in camera when I shot it. Actually Velvia kind of ruins my wife's skin tones here, there's a sort of maybe a little too yellowish or something and Astia probably looks the most pleasing slash natural. Alright, and the last one is another photo that was taken on 16th Street. It was definitely using classic chrome with the colour turned up. Classic Neg looks very stylized, obviously. You can see the difference in this guy's shirt here compared to here. This is more of a normal green. This has more of that kind of aqua but desaturated look to it. And out of the box, Velvia actually is really nice. It looks pretty good there. I'm surprised by that. Maybe just because it's in that sort of uh, subdued uh, shaded light situation. But for sure, with a little bit of tweaking, I would prefer this classic chrome look here. Okay, so maybe that helps you to decide if you like any of these fil film simulations more or understand a little bit more about their differences. Um, or which one you might want to use in your situations. I do recommend checking out the Fuji X Weekly blog for some recipe ideas. Check out Kevin Mullen's website as well uh, or his YouTube channel where he has built his own recipes um, for weddings and stuff. And you can also use all of those as a starting point and maybe figure out what it is that changes elements of each one. I find that the white balance is a big factor in it as well as the color chrome effects. So in the interest of not waffling about it, go and check out those film simulation recipes. Go and mess around with these in your camera. See what you can come up with and let me know what you thought of this. This is not the kind of video that I normally make. It took a lot more planning than I expected. Like usually I like to just go out, shoot, come back, edit what I've got, talk about it and put it out on the internet. This is a bit more sort of formal. I had to write stuff down. I tried to record this yesterday and uh, 
Well, that was a bit of a fail because of the light. Oh, that's strange. All right, let's see what superior looks like. And this morning, I'm racing against the light, and I actually recorded a whole bunch of it, about 15 minutes worth, with no sound. Anyways, I am gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.